it is good to see everybody. And can you believe it? We're at the end of Ephesians. It's been eight, 18, 19 weeks, I think, we've been on this. And we're finally there. And um, I believe starting next week, next Wednesday, um, Lord willing, I believe I'm gonna, we're going to start a little, but it's going to be a lot shorter, but um, a, a little series on living in exile based out of Jeremiah chapter 29. And one of the things that drives me absolutely crazy, it always has, is when Scripture is taken out of context. It drives me nuts. <laughs> it does. And one of those Scriptures that is taken out of context so often is Jeremiah 29, 11. It's such a great Scripture. It's such, great, it, it's, it, it's such a great thing. But Jeremiah 29, 11 is in light of exile. Right. And I'll just read this a little bit that I, I kind of jotted down. It's not a promise that God is going to give you everything. And your life will be all roses and puppies. Everybody's life isn't roses and puppies, is it? It's not all perfect. But it is a promise that even though we may be in exile here on earth. As we are. That we are in a sense, we are in exile here, right? We're living in a place temporarily as Christians and we're not here forever and someday God will destroy the enemy and we'll be released and and we'll get to go to our to our home that we're meant to go to and it's in heaven to be with God forever amen but while we are here in this exile on earth we're commanded just as the Israelites were commanded when they were in Babylonian exile for the 70 years Jeremiah, God gave them commands through Jeremiah. Here's here's what you need to do. Don't just sit around mope and cry that you're in exile, that you're in this bad place. But there's work to be done in exile. And so over the next, I believe, five weeks or so, I, I, I've, I've kind of been putting a little bit of stuff together. I was, that's what I was working on actually earlier. Um, we're going to look at these at, at this scripture in, in Jeremiah starting, I believe, starting next week. Um, and so... Come for that. I think it'll be good. Um, so, yeah, be here for that. So tonight, though, let's finish up. We're going to finish up our, um, what did I do with it? We're going to finish up our study in Ephesians. And we're going to be in chapter 6. I believe I closed it. What I get for trying to keep up two. There it is. Keep up two word files in one time. There we go. Okay, so. Ephesians um, chapter 6, and we're going to be in verses 18 through 24 tonight. And we're doing pretty good, doing pretty good. We should, we should get right through this, but uh, let's, not, let's go out strong and let's let the Lord speak to us tonight. And, and I pray God speaks to, to me and God speaks to all of us and through His Word, because that's how God speaks to us, right? I'll never get tired of saying this. If you want to know, if you want God to speak to you, read His Word. Because God's not going to, not always just going to give you some written message from the sky. God, speak to me. Well, then read His Word, and He'll speak to you. If you want to know what God says to you, read His Word. Because we're so fortunate to have His Word in plain English. <laughs> Back in the Old Testament, that was... They, they wanted a message from God. They would have loved to have God's whole word in, in plain language. But they were living it, right? They were relying on the pro in the Old Testament, relying on the prophets and, and those to, to give them the words from God, right? But here we have it all written down. We, have, we, know, the, we know the whole story. We, we know the whole counsel of God because it's right here of His word. We're so fortunate, but yet we take it for granted so much, don't we? Oh, let us not take it. It's the powerful word of God. There ain't nothing like it. But most of the time we just leave it. We're not saying we in here. Because you guys don't do that, right? And most times some people will just leave it on the shelf to collect dust. But you can, there's no excuse not to read You can get Bible anywhere now. You can get Bible on your cell phone. You know, you can, you can do it anywhere, right? And so, but anyhow, um, so when I remember when I was in youth, uh, you know, all kids, like all the kids, you know, like all teens and stuff off cell phones and they said you know, I'd ask did you bring your Bible and said no said, hey you got a Bible on your phone I'll give you actually and I'll let you download one right here right you can even download one because they'll like to use your phones and stuff so 
But anyways, all right, well, let's finish up tonight. Um, tonight, Paul talks about, we're going to talk about continuous prayer. And then just in like every letter and epistle that Paul writes, he has his greeting. And they're all very similar, but he has his greeting. Um, and so we're going to look at that. And there's always importance in that, too. There's importance with every part of, of God's word, every part of, of each epistle. And so Ephesians 6, 18 through 24, let's just read it all here together. I'll read it. I'm um, starting in verse 18, chapter 6. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Verse 21, but that ye also may know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, Tychicus, a beloved, how do you guys pronounce that? Tychicus, we'll just say that. Tomato, tomato, right? A beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord shall make known to you all things whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, that he might comfort your hearts. Verse 23, and there's, this is this greeting, the final greeting we see. Peace be to the brethren in love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Let's pray real quick again. Dear Lord Jesus, I... Uh, I pray for our study tonight, Lord, that you would reveal to us truth and reveal to me truth, Lord. Lord, we never want to get tired of reading your word. It's every time, Lord, we read it, you can show us something new. And I pray for, I pray for newness, Lord. I just pray that you would give us vision, give us direction, Lord, and that we'd hear from you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray, amen. So in introduction, the Bible was not written to us, right? Right? Paul didn't write this letter to us, but the Bible was written for us. Okay, there's a difference. Because it wasn't written to us and it was written to other people, as I've said, it's so important to always know the context of the Word of God. It's always, and we've talked about this for 18 weeks now, of the Ephesians, and it's it's so important to know who it was written to, and and, and when you go back to the Old Testament, talking about Jeremiah, it's a, when he's writing or he's prophesying to to the nation uh, of Judah and, and Israel. It's it's so important to know who and what state they're in, and everything because it's, the Bible is written to us, but it's written for us because it's written for us that we can see God's character, we can see God's attributes, and we can see who God is through His Word, and, and in light of who God is and who we are, we can, we can know how we ought to conduct ourselves in our modern and present time, right? And, in, and ultimately, in light of what God has done through, for us through Jesus Christ, and we can know how we should respond to that, right? We have the whole counsel of God's Word, don't we? You look back in the Old Testament, they, they didn't have Jesus Christ yet, but they had the promise of Christ. Amen. They had the promise of Jesus Christ. And so, in knowing that, it's, it's always important to know the context of the Bible. So, so important to know that. Because if we don't know that, and if you don't know, there's plenty of resources. you got people in your lives. you got, I can help you out. I don't, I'll be honest with you, I don't know everything. Sorry, sorry to let you down, but I'm not, I'm not the master theologian. But I have resources and I have the Bible. Amen. And I got a lot of good people that know in my life that know a lot of good stuff. And I, I got a lot of people resources, too. And that's that's almost just as good to have as anything. Right. And so and I'm not too, too proud or too ashamed to ever ask people that are smarter than me for help. Right. And so that's good to do. But the, the, it's so important to look at God's word in context, because if not, you, when you pull stuff out of context, it can change meaning. And we don't want to do that. So anyways, as in the case of this Pauline epistle to the, to the Ephesians, it was written to them. But Paul, but as Paul deals with issues that they face and in, in instructions 
we can as well draw from it and hear God through it. It is his word and it speaks. We can see the obstacles they faced 2,000 years ago we face today. In this last section, Paul, just like in all of his epistles, encourages and sends his final greetings. He encourages the, the Ephesians to pray continually in all kinds of ways, to pray for themselves, to pray for their brothers and sisters in Christ, and to specifically, specifically pray for him. So we look at these first three verses, 18 through 20. Um, once again, there, verse 18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplications for all saints. And once again, um, those maybe not as familiar with Wednesday night, I think everyone's pretty much been here. This is, if you got something to say about this, this is your time to do it, because I, I think that's biblical. There's, there's a time of exhortation, but then there's an also a time of, of discussion, and I think that's good, and, and, and sharing. So if anyone has anything, or a thought, or even a testimony, God put something in your heart. Um, share it with us, right? All right, so um, verse 19, And for me the utterance may be given to me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So number one there, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. The first thing that Paul says is about this praying is that we should be praying always, Right? The very first thing it, it says there, praying always, picking up. Remember, last week was what? About the full armor of God, right? So we need to take that full armor of God into consideration because this is just a continuation from that, right? Really, you can look at this last part as how to apply the full armor of God. You're given the full armor of God, and we looked at it, and and. All the, the different things were given, the helmet of salvation, shield of faith, breastplate of righteousness, the feet uh, of preparation, the sword of the spirit. I think I, I think I nailed it all. How do we use that? How, how do we apply that? God's given us everything we need. How do we apply that? Well, first of all, praying always. That's the first part of prayer, praying always. But how can someone pray at all times? How can... Are we to literally be literally talking? People think we're crazy, wouldn't they? I, that's, honestly, that's not possible, is it? We can't literally be talking, physically talking, literally all the time, right? Is that what that means? I don't, I don't think so. But one way to make, one way to pray always, to make quick, brief prayers, your habitual response to every situation you meet throughout the day. Think about that. A state of prayer, a constant state of prayer. We remain connected to God, don't we? Anytime something comes up, I got to make a decision about it. Or something happens, I, I call my wife. Who I call? I got to make a decision about something. That's a good thing to do. We should do that. We don't want to make a lot of decisions with probably without our spouse's consent, right? And I get you in trouble. Amen? But just like, but just like we... We ask, we ask our you know, we talk to our spouse, we should talk to God, right? Just as he's our friend, because he calls us our friend. Jesus, Jesus is our friend. We're a friend of God, right? He's closer than any brother. God is our father, right? He's our heavenly father. And so making this a practice is whatever we go through throughout the day, there's a little decision we should make. God, what should I do? Help me. Show me, Lord. Help me. Started the day out with prayer. God, this day, help me. I, can't, I cannot complete this day without you, God. Without the power of your Holy Spirit, I cannot complete this day. Because if I try to do it on my own power, I'm going to mess up. But God, I need you to go before me today. Because we don't know what's going to happen from day to day, do we? We don't know what we're going to face from day to day. When something crazy happens, that morning, usually, it was never expected for something crazy to happen. But we never know what we're going to face day to day. Now, I'll tell you who does. God does. So, I want to rely on the, on the person, on the God that knows everything. Because he knows how to handle it. And he's, he knows how I should handle it. Amen? 
And so we go to Him all the time. And another way is to order your life around God's desires and teachings so that your very life becomes a prayer. You don't have to isolate yourself from other people and from daily work in order to pray constantly. You can make prayer your life and your life a prayer while living in a world that needs God's powerful influence. Amen? So, then it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication, number two here, in this first section. Along with praying always, we need to pray all kinds of prayer. Or in other words, prayer upon prayer. We don't want to just go through the motions in prayer, do we? We should use every kind of prayer we can think of. We don't want to make, like I said, we don't want to make prayer going through the motions. Now, prayer is a habit, a good habit to form. But we don't want to just go through the motions in prayer. And the Bible calls it vain repetition. Or meaningless, not, not, not fervent prayer. Um, a, a good example that this could be, could be pre-meal prayers. Now, let's think about it. when we're praying for our food. Think about it. I know this might sound silly, but when we're praying for our food, are we really thankful that God has given us food to eat? Or is it just going through motions? One thing I do as a parent, now, now I am okay with, with memorized prayers. I'm okay that my, my kids learn that. They learn them at school. You know, that God is great, God is good, and all this. And they learn prayers at school. They learn uh, fun rhymes to say in prayer. And, and, and I'm okay with that, but I always, every th- time, I always encourage, they can say those, but I always encourage them, say a prayer from your heart. Just thank God. What, what's on your mind right now? And I encourage them to say that. I'm, I'm okay with them saying those cute, repetitious, rep- repetitive prayers they learn, rhymes. I think there's, as this day ends, thank you God. Annabelle learned one from school. Thank, thank you God as this day ends for my family and my friends. That's good. That's cute. And she, but I want her to mean it, right? Even, even being in first grade now, it's crazy she's in first grade. And even Sayla being three years old, I still want her, there's still things that are on her mind. And I want to train them to, to pray from your heart and to make it mean something. Because it needs to mean something every time we talk to God. Now I know we've, always, we've all been guilty at one point, I'm sure, of, of going through the motions and doing that. But Lord, help us. Help us, right? Amen. All kinds of prayer. There's all kinds of different prayer, isn't there? When we meet together and we pray here together and, and we pray in unison, and I love praying in unison, right? And, and, and I love doing that, but that's not the only way we pray. We pray by ourselves. So there's group prayer, individual prayer, silent prayer, shouting prayer, walking prayer. You're in the middle of the night and, and you're pacing and you're walking, walking prayer, kneeling prayer. Elegant prayer. Maybe you're praying before a, a vast body and you're trying to sound eloquent. And that's okay, but pray from your heart. Amen. Groaning prayer, constant prayer, and fervent prayer. Just pray. We can say that it is through prayer and spiritual strength, as we say, in, 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 that in the armor of God, go to work. In theory, the prayerless Christian can be strong and wearing all the armor, but never accomplishes anything because he fails to go into battle through prayer. Often we, we just don't pray because we are simply overconfident in our own abilities. Winston Churchill, Winston Churchill everyone knows who that is, right? If you don't, that's okay. But he said to, he said to Britain in the early days of World War II, I must drop one word of caution. For next to cowardice and treachery, overconfidence leading to neglect and slothfulness is the worst of wartime crimes. So pray. Pray for yourself. It's important to pray, to go to God for yourself and pray. So number three, the next thing Paul goes into, all the saints for all of the saints pray for all the saints yes yeah Uh uh-huh
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, absolutely. The devil, uh, Satan cannot read your mind. Don't think that. Satan cannot get into your mind unless you let him. Now, that's another story, another maybe a thing for another time. But, but, but Satan studies human nature. He's actually very, very brilliant in knowing a lot about us because he has us studied. I, I think he may even have demons assigned people. Just as God, I believe God has angels assigned to watch us, guardian angels. I, I, I believe that. That the, Satan has, there's, that's the spiritual warfare we're talking about. There's a spiritual warfare over us. And so what we fill our minds with is important. If we fill our minds with evil, we let evil in. We fill our minds with the things of God. We pray. We seek God and read His Word. Fill our things with the things of God. And evil is destroyed. Spiritual warfare, isn't it? It goes right along with it. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. That was good. Absolutely. So number three, we, we also should pray for all believers in Christ. Remember that the idea behind Ephesians was unity. Unity in the body of Christ. Remember we started out, it was all about unity. Staying unified in the body of Christ. And, and, and how, we should be in re, how we should be unified. And how that looks. How unity looks. And in, in unity, remember, uh, Paul talks about, uh, even in this previous, previous in this chapter, and even then in chapter 5, how different relationships work in the body of Christ. And how unity is brought because of order in relationships. Not everybody, not everybody is the leader of everything. If everybody was, if everybody was the leader, it would be chaotic. But there's an order. There's there, there's a, there's a sign of rank, and that's not a rank. It's not importance. It's not it's not a rank of importance. But but there is order, just as there's order. If God is the head, and 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 Christ is the bridegroom, and His church is the bride. There's order. And so in in light of that, um, we should pray for all believers. In Christ, because as as Ephesians has been about unity, how do we stay unified? Well, a lot of ways, but praying for each other and and seeking God for each other. Pray for the Christians you know. Pray for each other. Pray for the church around the world. Right. Churches everywhere. It's all around the world. The church is growing, abundantly growing in other parts of the world more now probably than it is in America. Which is sad. Pray for the church, the movement of the church across the world. This idea of watching that Paul says means to, to be alert or to be vigilant. What does it mean to be vigilant? Well, look this up. Be vigilant is to be to careful but, but to watch out for things that can hurt you or things that can disrupt is to be vigilant, right? If you're being vigilant about something, you're, be, you're, you're working hard and, and you're staying focused, but also you're, you're, you're making sure there's nothing distracting, right? We must keep each other in check spiritually. I believe that in a way. I think that, and I think that that, that works out in relationships. We remember the... The previous context, context before the armor of God was relationships. Watch out for attacks of Satan for one another. That's not picking nitpicking every little thing we're doing. No, that's not what that means, right? 
Amen. Can I hear you say amen, guys? Amen. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. But we, we, we want to be out. Watch, watch out for the, the attacks of Satan for one another. We see our Christian brother, and we see them, and, and, we, and we can see they might be fooled by Satan, and he makes something look so good. Hey, watch out. Watch out. Be careful. And I, I don't need to go into specifics, but I think we uh, kind of know what we're talking about. If, 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 someone, if, if there's a temptation, we can see it. This temptation that we should help each other. It's because we love each other, because we don't want Satan to have a stronghold. We don't want Satan to, to, take, to take one of our Christian brothers and sisters. Because we do it out of love. Supplication deals with making requests to God. Right? And, and we, there was a, a prayer acronym, ACTS. And I, I've, I've used this prayer acronym before, ACTS, A-C-T-S. And prayer is, the A stands for adoration. We adore God. The C is confession. We confess our wrongdoings, and we confess our sins to God. T is thanksgiving. We just thank God. We just thank God for what He's done. And S is supplication. It's That's when we make our requests before God. And so Paul talks about supplication, um, making requests. We must remain steadfast, which is what persevere means in here when Paul uses the word persevere, to remain steadfast in our prayer on behalf of others. What does it mean to be steadfast? Uh, there's several words you could define it with, but I, I saw some of the words I saw is staying in a fixed position. Hold your ground. To be devoted. To remain steadfast. To stand firm and not be moved. Not be moved. Are we devoted in prayer on behalf of others? About that. Are we devoted in prayer? To be devoted, it's what, what Paul's really saying here. Be devoted, be steadfast in praying for others. Because it's so important. Pray for each other. To lift each other up, it's so important. And we ask ourselves, are we devoted in prayer? Not just for ourselves, although we should pray for ourselves, but to pray for others. Pray for our family. Pray for our kids, our grandkids. To pray for our neighbors. To pray for uh, those that 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 serve us. Those that that a waitress or a waiter. Pray for them. We, we, do you think about that? Pray for them. Pray for others. Do we have the backs of our Christian brothers and sisters? Do we have their backs? I got your back. Right? That's a good thing. When, when a friend tells you that, hey, I got your back. I got your back. I got you. Right? I like friends that tell me that. But what I don't like is I don't like friends that tell me that and then talk about me behind my back. That's what I don't like. Nobody likes that, do they? We don't want to be that kind of friend, do we? Boy, I got your back. Hey, I got y'all's back, right? You got my back? All right. If we had that attitude, we have each other's backs. Hey, when someone struggles with something, we don't. We don't cast a judgment. I got your back. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I got you. We can get through this through prayer. We can get through this through seeking God. But don't give up. I got you. That's the attitude to have, amen. I got you. I got your back. We can battle spirituality not only on our own behalf, but also on the behalf of others. The soldier isn't only concerned for his or her own safety. But he, she, he or she feels an instinct to protect and to battle on behalf of others. We're Christ, onward Christian soldier, right? We're Christian soldiers. We go to verse 19 and, and Paul says, <clears throat> anything, anything about that before I move on? All right. Verse 19, Paul says, and for me. So he's saying, pray for yourselves, pray for others. But now I want you to specifically pray for me. But his, before I read it, his prayer wasn't pray for me that I can get out of this prison. Paul's in prison, remember? He's in a Roman prison. And he probably didn't really want to be there, naturally. But he didn't, one thing he didn't pray, he never prayed that God would remove him from prison. Isn't that interesting? He never prayed God that, that I can think of. 
remove me from this situation. But what he prayed was, use me in this situation. In, in, in essence, it's really what he was saying. And let's, so let's look at it, verse 19. Think about it like this when we read this verse, verse 19. And for me, pray for me. Remember, he's in prison for, for being a Christian, for preaching the gospel. That's what he's in prison for. It's not fair. What he's going through in life isn't fair. And but he says, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. After bringing up the idea that spiritual warfare can be waged on behalf of others in verse 9, now in verse 19 and 20, Paul asks his readers to pray for him. Undiscouraged and undefeated, Paul wrote powerful letters of encouragement from prison. Paul could have asked for prayer for many things, but he did not ask. One thing he didn't ask was the, the Ephesians to pray for, that his chains would be removed, but that he would continue to speak fearlessly for Christ in spite of the chains. Oh, what a prayer that is. Hey, we're, we'll probably never face the persecution that Paul, that Paul faced. I hope and pray we don't. Now, there's places in the world that do face that persecution. We're such a blessed people to be living where we are. We'll probably never face that persecution. But we do face prisons in life. We do face bad situations. We do face horrible things sometimes. God, it's okay to want to be out of where we're at sometimes we don't it's okay to not want to be in a bad situation of course but god give me wisdom in this bad situation lord how can i be used in this give me boldness to speak clearly give me give me boldness to proclaim the gospel in this situation to look at this as an opportunity to, to share the gospel i don't know how but an opportunity for for the glory of god to be to be revealed and to be lifted up Undiscouraged and undefeated, Paul wrote powerful letters of encouragement from prison, as I said. He, pro he probably had in mind of his upcoming defense before Caesar. He had to give a defense. He had to speak for himself. And it could have been what he was talking about. Give me utterance, give me boldness that I can speak. I can speak uh, uh, clearly that I, that I can um, uh, to make known the gospel through this, whatever I do. His heart and mind were fixed on his responsibility as an ambassador of the gospel. The idea behind utterance, and I'm in C there, the, the idea behind utterance is clear speaking. And in this clear speaking, utterance added to boldly, Paul asked for prayer that he might proclaim the gospel both clearly and with a fearless power. That he can speak it clearly and with a fearless power. Not being, not being afraid of maybe who it will offend. Not that, he want, not that we should or he wanted to offend anybody. Or not being afraid of my, what, happened, of my, what might happen to him. But a fearless of power from God. See, it can be easy to neglect one or the other. Right? But I pray that God gives me in every situation... And gives us um, that we might be able to proclaim the gospel clearly and with fearless power. And then number five, he, this, he talks about being an ambassador in bonds. And as we, um, as I just mentioned, um, his heart and mind were fixed on his responsibility of being this ambassador of the gospel. Well, the Greek word for bonds are changed. Um, some translations say chains. But bonds, I mean, he's in bonds, an ambassador in chains or in bonds, meant a prisoner's shackles, okay? So, was he, most would say and that that's the idea behind that. But I made a neat, a neat connection came across to me as I was studying and reading this. Um, it could also be used for the gold adornment worn around the neck and wrists of the wealthy and powerful. Okay, this, these chains. So it said, I'm, I'm, I'm a prisoner in chains. I'm an ambassador in chains for the gospel. Well, that, that could have been used for that. The, 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 like I said, the, uh, the adornment worn around the, the wealthy, right? And the powerful. On special occasions, ambassadors 
wore such chains to show their riches and power and dignity of the government they represented. Paul considers his prisoners' chains to actually be the glorious adornment of an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I thought that was a pretty neat connection. An ambassador is one that represents someone else, right? That's what an ambassador is. And we, we talked about this inside, I believe, Sunday school this past Sunday morning, yeah. An ambassador is, is one that represents someone else, and, and that person also remains under the authority of the person or entity they are representing. It's not that they represent and they are free to do whatever they want, but they are within guidelines. They are, they are in control of the one they're representing. So we must ask ourselves after reading this, are we true ambassadors of Christ? Are we representing Christ in what we do? And do we remain under his control or do we allow ourselves to remain under his control? God can use use us in, in any circumstance to do his will. I believe that Do you believe that he can use us in any circumstance we face and anything, anywhere we're at, any place we're at, any circumstance or, or, or stage of life from the youngest to the very, very oldest. You know, sometimes I think Annabelle has more boldness than me sometimes when Kids don't care what they say, do they? We was at, we was at Ramos. I took in Ramos last Friday. They love Ramos hot dogs. My girls will love it. Yeah, I'm like, hallelujah, right? You never know what to feed my girls. Just feed my hot dog. They'll be happy. I'll have a big old T-bone steak. No, they don't want that. They just want a hot dog. But uh, we, I took them, and I told them I'd take them Friday, or actually it was Saturday, I think we went. Yeah, I said, I'll take you before you go back to school. Zambel started school this week, and Sayla now starts three days. She's going three days a week now. And so we went there, and, and as we were there, Katie actually went with us. And Katie likes it, but not as much as I do. We'll just say that. I like the hot sauce. She didn't like anything hot. But anyways, she asked the, the lady. You all know the lady that works there. Um, she, she asked, Annabelle said, hey, do you, or what would she say? Do you, do you praise, or, do you, oh, she said, do you know Jesus? She asked him that. And then she said, yeah. And then she said, well, do you praise him? And she said, oh, I praise him and I pray all the time. And then Annabelle says, well, give me all your money. I'm not kidding. I'm not joking. She said that. She was joking. I'm like, well, okay, well, maybe she was getting her ready. No. And, you know, there, she's nice. And the lady looked at her and said, never. So it was funny. But, you know, sometimes I wonder if, if my six-year-old isn't a better evangelist than me. And, you know, I, and I, I th I'm, I'm thankful for that and. Um, but God can use us in any circumstance to do his will. Even as, even as we pray for a change in our circumstance and, and you know, there's no, there's, it's okay to do that. It's okay to do that. But we should also pray that God will accomplish his plan through us right where we are. Think about that. Maybe God wants to accomplish something right where we are in whatever circumstance we are. We're all in different circumstances. We're all in different stages. But I believe God, God doesn't, I don't think things are by accident. And even if we're in a place because we put ourselves there, we're in a bad place because we put ourselves there, because for whatever reason, God can still use us in that valley. God can still use us in, in, in that place. God works all things together for his good. Doesn't mean I don't think God causes the bad things to happen necessarily. But even the bad things that happen because we live in a sin-stricken world that is full of heartache and death and disease and, and horrible evil. We're in the bad place because of that. God can still use that for His good to accomplish His good to accomplish His will. Knowing God's eternal purpose for us will help us through the difficult time. All right, anybody have, anybody have anything? And. This next section, the greeting, it's, uh, man, it's relatively short, so just keep moving right along. I was reading those hands backwards, thinking it was a quarter to. It's 8 o'clock, almost 8. All right. Verse 20 through 24. See, time flies when you're having a good time, isn't it? There's nothing I like. I, I don't like doing much more than talking about God's Word, studying and that's because of God, because that ain't in myself. I'm not studious by nature. You guys think that. I, 
I, I am not a studious person. I am not one that in high school and I, I spent all my time. Now my wife, she that was her. She was salutatorian. I was somewhere in the middle. But um, I did good grades. That just means we had a lot of smart people. But but that's God giving me that because my nature, that's not I am. But anyhow, another story for another time. All right. Verse 21, but that ye may also know my affairs and how I do. Tychicus, a beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye might know our affairs, and that he might comfort your hearts. Peace be to the brethren, and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Tychus, a beloved brother. He was an associate of Paul's mentioned in other letters, as I have there written there, as you can see, Acts 20, verse 4, Colossians 4, Timothy 4, and Titus chapter 3 is mentioned in those. Tychus seems to have been uh, often used by Paul as a messenger. Paul says that ye might know our affairs, right? Um, and then he says that, Paul says that he might comfort your hearts. See, Paul wanted Tychicus, Tychicus to comfort the Ephesians, and, and I believe everyone else who read this letter, about Paul's condition during his imprisonment in Rome. There in uh, 7, which that should have started over numbering, but I, I just now caught that, it didn't. Um, Peace be to your brethren. Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ. Pro Paul concludes... Concluded the letter as he began it, as he began it, with reference to grace and peace. These two essential cornerstones are are the essential cornerstones for the Christian life: grace and peace. Many of you have experienced that in your life: His grace, and His peace. Well, if it were, weren't for His grace, where would I be? What's well, grace? Unmerited favor. It's gifts to us that we don't deserve. We've all received grace when we receive salvation. Amen. We didn't deserve it. But God also gives us things and blesses us in our lives when we don't deserve it. Because of grace. And then peace. The peace of God that passeth all understanding. To guard our hearts and our minds. It's his peace. It's a peace that doesn't make sense to the world. How can we have a peace through a through a storm we're going through? Oh, I don't know how I would complete. I don't know how I would have got through life if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. His grace. And his peace in my life. If we don't know his peace, you can know his peace in your heart. It's not a, once again, it's not a roses and puppies all the all every day thing, is it? But it's a peace that when we're getting the thorns, and what's the opposite of a puppy? A snake? When those come in our lives, that was a bad analogy, but you get what I'm saying. And we can still have a peace, amen? Number eight, all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity, Paul says. In sincerity is literally in uncorruptness. The idea may well be with, with an undying love. Our love for the Lord should be undying. Undying love. I pray to have an undying love for the Lord. And last... He says, Paul says, grace be with all them. And there's other stuff in here. But Paul ends, grace be with all them. And once again, he talks about in sincerity. Sincerity, right? Undying. But Paul ended by pronouncing a blessing. Which was his way of helping the Ephesians to walk in every spiritual blessing. Remember back in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Every spiritual blessing. In the heavenly places in Christ. That is his blessing. That they would walk in this. And that was his idea. And, and, and this conclusion and recap. Is there anything any, anything else that stands out to anybody in this? Before we conclude on this. and Read this together. So this conclusion and recap. Kind of summed up together here. Th this letter was meant for circulation. Among other churches besides Ephesus. In this letter, Paul highlighted the supremacy of Christ. Remember the supremacy of Christ? 
He gave information on both the nature of the church and how church members should live and conduct themselves. And, and, and he stressed the unity of all believers, whether they be male, female, parent, child, master, slave, regardless of sex, nationality, or social rank. But the home and the church are different places to live the Christian life. Because our real self comes through to comes through to those who know us well. Isn't that true? So we, we, we I think that's a lot of what, what, how it was dealt with, you know, those people in relationships. Because those people we have relationships with, they know us well. People are good at putting on a front sometimes. Everybody wears, wears different hats and puts on a mask a lot, many times. Sometimes we have to. But the people that know us well know, know us. And, and, and are watching us and seeing how we conduct ourselves and, 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 and examining this Christian life, even though they wouldn't admit it might not or, or we might not realize it. I think people are examining us how we how this Christian life is working out in our hearts and our lives. Close relationships between imperfect people can lead to trouble. It can. We're all imperfect people, humanly imperfect, aren't we? But or. Or it can work to increase to increased faith and depend and deepen dependence on God. Right? We can build unity in our churches through willing submission to Christ's leadership and humble service to one another. And I I, I kind of think that's kind of the recap of this, maybe this chapter. We can build unity in our churches, really in the church in general, the the, the large church in general. Those that call on the name of Jesus and those who claim that Jesus is the only way to heaven and that he's died and rose again and have received Jesus as their savior. The, the church, the true church, we can build unity and we, we have to build unity in, in the church, but it will be through willing submission to Christ's leadership. Right. And humble service to one another as we humble ourselves and we sometimes we get off our high horse. We humble ourselves and say, hey, I'm here by the grace of God and by his grace only. And, and we submit, uh, biblically submit to God and one another. Um, but else have anything else to, to add?